If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you pause the video and try to answer this question on your own first before listening on. One very important aspect of the question is that the top plate bears a negative charge and the bottom plate bears a positive charge. So as the red colored positive charge enters the region between the plates, it's going to be attracted towards that negatively charged plate. And what's going on there is that you have this positive charge and there is an electric force that is pulling up on that positive charge. It's important to note that that electric force is only acting in the vertical direction. And in fact, there are no forces acting in the horizontal direction. In other words, there's nothing either pushing or pulling on the charge in the horizontal direction. So horizontally, if there are zero net forces acting on the charge, we can conclude that the acceleration in the horizontal direction is also zero meters per second squared. And the reason that that's beneficial is because we can use an equation from kinematics in order to determine how long it will take for the particle to pass through the region between the plates. We recall from kinematics that the displacement in a particular direction is equal to the initial velocity times the time plus one-half times the acceleration times the time squared. Now horizontally we noted that the acceleration is equal to zero so if we plugged zero in for that acceleration that's going to actually cancel away this entire term right here. And so the displacement in the horizontal direction would simply be the initial velocity in the horizontal direction multiplied by the time. We can actually rearrange this equation in order to solve for the time. So what we would do is we would divide both sides of it by the initial velocity so that it cancels out on the right hand side. And we can see that the time in the horizontal direction would be the displacement in the horizontal direction divided by the initial velocity in the horizontal direction. Now, the displacement in the horizontal direction is represented in the picture by L, and that was given to us as being 32 centimeters, or 0.32 meters. So we can plug that in for the horizontal displacement. The initial velocity in the horizontal direction was given to us as 2.6 times 10 to the power of 6 meters per second. So we'll plug these values into our calculator, and that will give us the time. When we do that, we get a value of roughly 1.23 times 10 to the power of minus 7 seconds. And so this would be the time that it takes the particle to travel the distance between the two plates, and therefore that is the correct answer to part A. Now, to answer part B, we're going to examine what's happening in the vertical direction rather than in the horizontal direction. And it turns out that we'll be able to use the same equation that we used earlier. This time, however, let's use the symbol delta y to represent the vertical displacement. And that'll, again, equal the same values over here. Now, it's important to note that initially the particle is only moving in the horizontal direction. So vertically speaking, the initial velocity is equal to 0 meters per second. That, of course, is going to knock out this term right here. We already have the time computed from part A, so the only thing that's missing right now is the acceleration. If we can determine that acceleration, we're going to be in business. Now we know from physics 1 that acceleration is equal to the net force acting on an object divided by its mass. We noted earlier that there was a net force acting on that charged particle. It was the electric force. So we can actually put a little subscript E right here to represent the electric force. Now we know from this chapter that the electric force is simply the product of the charge and the electric field strength. We have all these values. Note that the charge which was given to us as being positive 2e. So that would mean we would take 2 and multiply it by the value of e, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. The electric field strength was given to us as well. Notice it's in kilonewtons per coulomb, so we would want to write that as 33 times 10 to the power of 3 newtons per coulomb, since kilo, of course, is 10 to the power of 3, and then we divide by the given mass of the particle, which is already in the standard units of kilograms. So let's pick up our calculators and crunch this down. 
When we do that, we get about 1.19 times 10 to the power of 11 meters per second squared as the acceleration in the vertical direction. So we come back over to our displacement calculation and we simply plug in that acceleration that we just determined and then we also plug in the time that we determined earlier. Notice that the time in the horizontal direction is equal to the time in the vertical direction. Also, don't forget to square the time when you compute the answer. So when we compute this, we can see the vertical displacement is roughly 8.99 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. We have to carefully note that the question wants the answer in millimeters. And so to convert meters to millimeters, we can multiply by a conversion factor. We know that one meter is a thousand millimeters. Kind of running out of room here. So if we multiply our answer by 1,000, we should get the correct value. And I'm going to squeeze it in right down here. We get 0.899 approximately millimeters. And this should be the correct answer to part B.